Hi folks, so this is part three of the revival to come. I said that I would share over the coming weeks and months about a revival to come that I believe would be pouring out upon the UK and the nations. And of course, we're seeing some phenomenal things now starting to happen in recent weeks across the nations. So, you know, surely could this be, you know, what are we meant to be participating with in this time to see God move across the nations? So I shared a few weeks ago in part one about and going back to some of the prophecies you know, back in the 1990s and things that are being fulfilled now or stepping into now. I was talking there about the uh, initially about the drought of 1989, 90 to 1992, and I shared some of the headlines about the worst drought in 40, 80, 100 years, and then in visions and rhymes about how God would raise up an army of prayers in a time of spiritual drought. There's drought there that's going to be broken by rain, but God would raise up an army of prayers, something I shared in rhyme, and then I you know, reference 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if only my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then when I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal the land. We talked about a prophetic, prayerful, proper, prideless people. And then in part two, I talked about the rain coming, you know, the worst rain in up to 200 years across the UK and some of the headlines around that, um, you know, prophecy of March 92 and then April 1992, this you know, this rain that came. And so I shared some headlines about um, that was a prophesying in, in rhyme, particularly about a church like Elijah. You know, now see the clouds gather six times, not there. Now see at the seventh, the showers they bear. So ask the Lord, Lord, send the rain to feed the seed and raise the grain. And that was just part of that prophetic rhyme. It has been part of my prayer for the last few decades about you know seeing the rain the rain what spiritual rain are you going to send when god looking to raise up a church like elijah whose name means the lord is god who are just pointing to god in everything keep turning to god about the building of an altar like the church with the breath of the church the word and the spirit you know believers coming together in the word and the spirit the depth of ministry of that altar where we've got apostolic prophetic evangelistic pastoral teaching ministry god's church moving together um, and then the length of that altar you know people communicating with god walking with god and communicating with unbelievers like elijah and then you're know, waiting for god to send fire upon this altar and then that image after that of rain to come and today i want to talk about some prophecies to do with the house of Eli, the house of Windsor, and a faithful high priest, Zadok. So I'm taking us back to um, March, April 1992, and I'm sitting in our home, and I see these words coming towards the back of my head. And it's from 1 Samuel 3, 11 and 12, that see, I'm about to do something in the land that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. And in terms of scriptural context, you know, 1 Samuel 2, there's a prophecy um, concerning the house of Eli. And, and 1 Samuel 3, that's God saying he's going to fulfill it. But here are these verses something to do with the UK, that God is going to do something in the land that the ears of everyone who hear about it would tingle. There would be a gossiping message, a message being spoken on the lips and heard across the nation of the UK to do with the house of Eli. And I understood from what God was saying, scripture and what God was saying, that this house of Eli was the house of that it was given some sort of authority, some sort of position of oversight of worship within the land. And I understood this to be the house of Windsor. And I understood in that context that Eli, God is speaking as Eli, like the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. And that Eli was, in the days of scripture, was the high priest. And I felt like God is saying there's some gossiping message going to go through the land that's to do with the house of Windsor. Now, Eli was doing a good job. Eli had been able to advise Samuel. 
Eli was, you know, worshipping God, but Eli's offspring were off the rails. And I understood that there were two areas that Eli's offspring off the rails. And this is what I felt Father was saying about the house of Windsor, that you know, Eli's offspring, when we read, read 1 Samuel 2, you know, go off the rails in terms of immorality issues and desecrating the sacrifices. There's, there's areas of false worship start to become involved with Eli's offspring. And so God passes some consequences, some judgments on the house of Eli. And I felt like Father was saying that the house of Windsor, Queen Elizabeth carries a grace as a defender of the faith for the nation. And you know, she lived for a long time. It wasn't, I don't believe, just physically that she was well, but that God extended his hand and his arm of grace across the United Kingdom with her life and her her actions, her prophetic actions, and the authority that she brought as defender of the faith. But since this time in 1992, I felt that when the Queen passes, there is a new defender of the faith. That when Eli dies in scripture, what happens is um, the, Eli dies, and at that moment, the promise that God has made, God makes a promise in 1 Samuel 2.35, that I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his priestly house and they will minister before my anointed one always. And I felt like God was saying at the passing of the queen, God will raise up his church as a faithful priest. They will be the new defender of the faith, the faithful ones. So you know, we probably have noticed this and seen this but i feel like we're in days in the uk where god is calling for a faithful church to rise up that you are the new defender of the faith in that sense there could be more challenges there are more and more challenges and god looking for a faithful high priest zadok rises up following eli's death the passing of the queen i feel like there's a faithful church to step up who are the faithful ones who remain faithful to scriptures, faithful to the life of God, faithful to who he is, his Holy Spirit in us and at work in this, faithful in terms of seeking him and his presence and representing God um, as his priests on the earth, worshipping and praying for, for him to move upon our nation. So in terms of the royal family back in the, the 90s, what we saw was that, you know, so I was talking about March, April 1992, and just and following this, we saw the separation of um, Andrew and Fergie. We saw um, the divorce of Princess Anne and Mark Phillips. We saw Diana's book come out. And we saw more of the revelations and information around Charles and Camilla and the Charles and Diana and their uh, breaking up around that time, their separation. And then at the end of 1992, there was the fire at Windsor Castle, and then the Queen called it her Annus Horribilis. So I feel like Father's been giving signs, is giving signs, there are signs happening around us. I believe that there's a revival to come, and God is saying to us, encouraging us, be the faithful high priest. Don't let this moment go. You know, be defender of the faith. You know, seek true faith, keep stepping up to it, speaking up for it, you know, stepping into all that God has for you. Be the faithful high priest. And when Eli passes, Eli has been raising up Samuel, as well as Zadok coming, is Samuel. So those two come together. And with Samuel is a great prophetic forerunner of the great David, Davidic empire to come, and, and Zadok and um, lives during the time of Samuel and David. So faithfulness is something that God, I feel, really wants in this season. You know, the Queen has passed, let's be faithful. There's great promises in Scripture and, and um, encouragements to be faithful. Israel were often accused of being unfaithful in Scripture. God causes, calls us to faithfulness. It's a fruit of the Spirit. We read in the likes of Numbers 12, 6 to 8, that you know, when a prophet of the Lord is amongst you, and you know, the scripture then talks about how a prophet might speak in dreams and visions, 
But it talks there and speaks there of Moses being faithful. It's a characteristic of Moses that he is faithful. And then God explains, speaks out in Scripture, Numbers 12, 6 to 8, that um, that faithfulness results in Moses um, hearing clearly this clarity. Sees God face to face, there's intimacy. And then Jesus talks about faithfulness in Matthew 25, 21 and 23, how with faithfulness there's greater responsibility. And how with faithfulness there is the Father's happiness. Enjoy your Master's happiness, the Father's happiness. So God calls us to be faithful. It's a fruit of his spirit. I feel it's something that God is really calling us to step into. But the promises, the consequences are there of that are clarity and fresh hearing of God's voice for us individually, but also corporately as the church. A fresh intimacy, intimacy, what it would be like to know God even more. As we're faithful, then we can know him even more. And as we're faithful, we get greater responsibility. What would that look like? Heavenly responsibility for us to step into as believers and the church. And then to know even more of the master's happiness as we step into his faithfulness. So let's keep uh, praying, knowing his presence, knowing more and more of his intimacy, understanding the signs of the times and being a faithful church like Zadok the high priest, that we might step into the next things of God and this great revival that I believe God wants to send and we want to see God moving across the nations. Bless you, my friends.